Taking care of children means taking care of the future. According to World Health Organization in 2018, 22% of children aged less than 5 years in the world suffer from stunting and 49 million suffer from wasting. West Sumatra province ranks 19 with the highest wasting rate in children under 5 years old. It brings us members of Skov Chimsa Andalas University to continue a sustainable project called Amsting, Education for Preventing Stunting in Children. The target of this activity are mothers, children, and also four cadres who have been formed. Einstein aims to increase the knowledge of 30 mothers of productive age in Kelurahan Jati Parang City about stunting and the importance of child nutrition through counseling and empowering four cadres for two years. These are the eight indicators of success for this activity. We have four series of interventions. On pre-intervention, training for SCOF members on how to check blood pressure and blood sugar, the nutrition and children, the contents of easy peering coup and stunting, given by Dr. Johanna Trinanda. On first intervention, SCOF members gave the material to four cadres who have been formed, and training on how to conduct child and supplementary examination and discuss plans for future intervention. On the second intervention, visiting the resident of Jati Bohpul Village, Padang City, to fill out the pre-intervention questionnaire regarding knowledge, attitudes, and behavior of mothers towards stunting and malnutrition in children, and also did the easy peeling co education. And for the last intervention, education on stunting and nutrition for children to 37 mothers of Jati Bohpul Village. We use several kinds of evaluation and follow-up methods to keep this activity sustained. During the activity, we also work with three external partners such as Padang City Health Office, Andalas Public Health Center, and Pijar Kencana Integrated Health Care Center as stakeholder. Through this activity, we manage to increase the knowledge of members from Skov Chimsa Andalas University about nutrition in children, easy piringku, and stunting to be average of 98.4 and 93.3. Four cadres who have been formed to 88.5 and a new target to be a fetch of 90.67. We also managed to take the anthropometric measurement of children under 5 in the area of Jati Boabur Village and conducting free health checks for mothers in Jati Boabur Village to participate in counseling. And we succeed to form three new cadres from the Kurahan Jati Parang City. Did you guys know, according to Riskets 2018, about 1.5% of Indonesians have diabetes mellitus. That counts about 4 million people. And because of that, we were curious to know about the real condition in the population around Universitas Pajajaran. So, we did a survey on Desa Cipaci. And it turned out that 55 of our respondents didn't know about diabetes mellitus and were not aware to check their own blood glucose. To increase the knowledge and skills of Kader RW2 join educating other community and Kader RW3 in understanding diabetes mellitus. Measured by minimum of 70% of DLO from the checklist has been given by RW2 and the 20% improvement on the post test given to RW3. Throughout 2020 until 2022, Scoff Chimsa have run health and sustainable project called Remedy raising awareness and empowering women to eradicate diabetes. After three years of community development with Skov Jim Saif Kaunpat, the cadres of RW7 have become independent and routinely check up their health. They also do monthly morning exercise together. In this year, despite the pandemic, we had done three interventions via the WhatsApp group. We had so much fun. First, we played games with the cadres of RW7 and RW3. And then, we share an education via poster about healthy diet and gestational diabetes. We also provide a Q&A session for the cadres with Dr. Elisa from Sobat Diabet. The cadres were very excited and asked a lot of questions. In the last intervention, 
We did a focus group discussion between cadres of RW7 and RW3 with the cadres of RW7 as the leader. To make sure we meet the goals of this activity, here are our indicators. As for the follow-up, we provide questionnaire for cadres of RW7 and RW3 regarding the previous learning objectives. And until now, we still keep in touch with them via the WA group. Here are the impacts that we have achieved. About 50% of the learning objective checklists have been fulfilled by the cadres of RW7 when leading the FGD. As the object of intervention, the cadres of RW3 have completed more than 50% of the checklist. The SCOF Chimps have gone but members' knowledge about diabetes has shown 15.8% improvement of post-test compared to pre-test. So, that is a glimpse about remedy, raising awareness, and empowering women to eradicate diabetes. See you next time! BTS Breaking the Silence BTS is a community development by SCOMI Chimsa FK SH. It has the goal of executing trainings about sign language given by Pusbisindo, Pusat Bahasa Isyarat Indonesia, or Indonesian Sign Language Center. It is given to preclinical students at the Faculty of Medicine of UIN Jakarta. According to the 2015 SUPAS, there are 8.56% of the population who have disabilities, 0.57% of the population cannot hear, and 1.52% of the population have difficulty communicating. The question is, how do the deaf communicate? Maybe many of you already know, deaf people communicate using sign language, a language that relies on hand movements. Many of the deaf people have a hard time communicating with doctors because of their limitations, hence it is difficult for them to explain their medical condition. Therefore, as a future doctor, training in sign language is needed so that it can facilitate the history-taking process in order to establish the correct diagnosis. The reason for community selection Based on the results of the pre-activity assessment distributed to FKU UIN students and filled by 146 students, it was found that 126 people or 86% had never studied sign language before, and the average score of knowledge about sign language was 4.71. This shows that there is still a lack of knowledge and awareness about sign language among FKU UIN students. That is why SCOMI Chimsa FK UIN SH decided to create a community development called BTS Breaking the Silence which aims to provide sign language trainings for FK UIN students. The community target of BTS is preclinical students at the Faculty of Medicine of UIN Jakarta with primary assessment scores below 50. There are 30 people in total. Activity Goal the main goal of BTS as a community development is to improve the knowledge and ability of preclinical students at the Faculty of Medicine of UIN Jakarta regarding sign language by giving out sign language trainings from Pusbisindo, Indonesian Sign Language Center, which will be measured by an average post-test score increasing by 20% from the pre-test score and minimum post-test score of 70 in each intervention. The indicators of success. First, the increase in the post-intervention assessment value by 20% from the pre-intervention assessment, with 70 as the minimum post-intervention assessment score. The average post-test score increasing by 20% from the pre-test score and minimum post-test score of 70 in each intervention. And last, attended by at least 30 preclinical students at the Faculty of Medicine of OIN Jakarta. The first intervention is done in a form of presentation given by Pusbisindo to preclinical students at the Faculty of Medicine of UIN Jakarta about sign language anamnesis, which includes the way to do an introduction, the way to recognize and do letters and numbers in sign language, also in asking patient information and medical condition. After the presentation, the students are divided into groups and assigned to different breakout rooms on Zoom application to practice what they have been taught. The second intervention is another presentation about sign language anamnesis, including how to ask a patient his or her main medical problem or their current medical condition. 
Same as the first intervention, each group will enter different breakout rooms. The third intervention is a presentation about sign language anamnesis, including how to ask a patient his or her past medical history. The fourth and final intervention is a presentation about sign language anamnesis, including how to ask a patient his or her social history, then followed by an anamnesis exam using sign language to measure the ability of the participants. Evaluation method. The evaluation method used in this activity is seen and measured by the scores of the pre-post test and the pre-post intervention assessments. Follow-up method. BTS uses a follow-up method that includes sharing the video recording of each intervention through a WhatsApp group that was made prior to the activity's interventions. The recordings are distributed one week after each intervention. External Partners Chimsa FKUN SH made partnership and worked together with Pusbisindo, Pusat Bahasa Isyarat Indonesia as speakers on BTS Community Development. Activity Impact According to the results that were collected by the end of the activity, there was an increase of the average post-test score from the pre-test score by 20%. This shows that BTS successfully increased the knowledge of the target community about sign language. From the data that was collected in the final intervention, which was in the form of anamnesis exam results, it was found that the average score on the exam was 90.5, which means majority of the participants were able to do anamnesis in sign language skillfully. The minimum passing score was 60, and so all of the participants of BTS passed the exam with high scores. According to the post-activity assessment results, it was found that there was an increase of 122%. That is all for BTS, Breaking the Silence from Chimsa FK UNSH. Thank you, Chimsa, Empowering Medical Students, Improving Nation's Health. Kampung Lio, salah satu daerah di Depok, Jawa Barat, masih memiliki permasalahan kesehatan pada balita. Berdasarkan hasil asesmen FKUI tahun 2019, tidak terdapat pendataan berat badan lahir bayi yang adekuat. Hal ini disinyalir turut mengakibatkan 10 dari 50 balita mengalami gizi buruk atau stunting. Kecamatan tempat Kampung Lio berada juga tercatat memiliki cakupan pemberian ASI eksklusif yang hanya mencapai 52%. Oleh karena itu, Skov Cimsa UI bertekad untuk mengadakan sebuah community development bersama ibu-ibu di Kampung Lio mengenai kesehatan balita yang dinamakan Omega 3. Goals dari Omega 3 adalah meningkatkan pemahaman tentang seribu hari pertama kehidupan, gizi anak, dan stunting melalui pemberian edukasi menggunakan media daring dan luring kepada minimal 20 ibu yang memiliki anak balita atau berpotensi memiliki anak balita di Kampung Lio sejak Agustus 2020 hingga Mei 2021 dan diukur dengan rata-rata kenaikan 20% nilai post-test dibandingkan pre-test dan pengisian logbook setiap bulannya. Omega 3, sesuai singkatannya, yaitu ayo menyudahi kekurangan nutrisi pada balita, berfokus pada cimsa program non-communicable disease. Omega 3 diinisiasi dengan mengadakan bonding dalam bentuk daring pada bulan Agustus 2020 karena adanya pandemi COVID-19. Pada intervensi 1, di bulan September 2020, Omega 3 mengangkat topik 1000 hari pertama kehidupan dan malnutrisi. Untuk intervensi kedua, di bulan November 2020, Omega 3 membawakan topik stunting dan cara pencegahannya, disertai dengan membagikan 27 stunting kit berupa head chart. Di intervensi ketiga, pada bulan Februari 2021, Omega 3 hendak mengadakan edukasi mengenai gizi seimbang disertai dengan lomba masak piring seimbang. Pada intervensi keempat, di bulan April 2021 nanti, Omega 3 hendak membawakan topik imunisasi. Dan di intervensi terakhir, di bulan Mei 2021 nanti, Omega 3 hendak mengedukasi mengenai pemberian ASI dan empasi. Metode evaluasi dan follow up yang digunakan oleh Omega 3 antara lain, pre-test, post-test, dan perekaman tinggi badan balita per bulan. 
Sejauh ini, Omega 3 telah bekerja sama dengan 1000 Days Fund sebagai penyedia head chart untuk ibu-ibu di kampung Leo. Impact yang telah diberikan oleh Omega 3 adalah melakukan edukasi kepada 29 ibu mengenai stunting, membagikan sebanyak 27 head chart dan cara penggunaannya, dan rata-rata peningkatan nilai post sebanding nilai pre sebanyak 21,32%. Did you know, over the last five years, a total of 5,366 disasters has struck the special region of Yogyakarta. As a result, many people were negatively affected, especially special needs children. According to the research done on 18 inclusive schools in Yogyakarta, many children are still confused on what to do once natural disasters occur. They have concluded on three major factors that cause such confusion. After learning those points of information, SCORP Jim Saugam has decided to choose SLB Karna Manohara, one of Yogyakarta's educational institutions for special needs children. As our target community, our mission is to develop a group of trained instructors derived from at least 50% of school teachers who are able to properly educate their students on disaster management. In addition, we wish to implement a viable evacuation system that is able to be executed by the students. Prior to the pandemic, two interventions were successfully done through games such as Tas Siaga. Furthermore, storytelling sessions regarding natural disasters were done in focus group discussions. Follow-up and evaluation methods were done by distributing pre-tests and post-tests to the community and evaluation form to the organizing committee and external partners, both via Google Form, followed by routine visits and disaster simulations every other month. In addition, we also stay in touch with the principal and interview him via WhatsApp. While it is a challenge to execute a community development project online, through intensive communication, academicians of SLB Karna Manohara and Diamonds Organizing Committee see the situation as an opportunity to create a sustainable impact by expanding Diamonds' target. For that reason, our online activities in Diamonds starts with forming cadre consisting of teachers and staff of the school. To prepare the teachers, we partner with the Regional Agency for Disaster Management of the Special Region of Yogyakarta, or BPBD DIA for short, and Red R to create a guidebook. We will also make a video in the form of a vlog with a virtual reality concept that showcases the evacuation route for future reference. Both guidebook and video will then be explained by the organizing committee to the teachers and staff through WhatsApp. Additionally, BPBD DIE also assists us to fix the school flaws evacuation system. Meanwhile, we partner with the R and the Unspoken Ministry for our project training about disaster management and how to properly communicate with the deaf community. After February's intervention, we will also distribute pre-tests, post-tests, and evaluation form via Google Forms to the same targets. For our follow-up method, the teachers will submit a survey via Google Form containing documentation of their class session. Later on, we will visit the school to conduct a sudden disaster simulation. To evaluate the success of our overall program, a set of indicators were made and all of them were achieved, which are a 50% increase in the student's post-test score, post-test score done by the organizing committee is greater than 60%, 60% of students are able to follow the disaster simulation well, and an effective evacuation system is installed. With creating an inclusive society as one of SCORP's novel missions, we are taking a small step towards something greater. This is more than just our project. This is Diamond. Hello, we are Macau from SCORA Team CFK Wenes. Based on data from the Central Java Help Profile in 2018, the number of maternal deaths in Central Java in 2018 was 421 cases. In Solo, the maternal and infant mortality rates were still high. There were 57 infant deaths or 5.9 per 1,000 live births, and maternal mortality increased up to 100%. From 2013, there were 3 cases, became 6 cases in 2014, and 4 cases in 2018. These are the results of our interview with cadres in 2020. These are the goals of Macau. Target community, cadres of Posyandu Balita RW 22 Ngore Sanjebre, Surakarta with a total of 11 people, pregnant women and mothers with child 0 to 24 months with a total of 15 people. These are our activities on Macau. 
Macau Opening. Inform the community about Macau Activity Plan via WhatsApp group. Training for Posyandu Cadres of RW 20 Dongoresan. Send videos featuring a doctor via a WhatsApp group and followed by discussions. Training for member of Skora Chimsa FK Wenes. Presented by Petra to provide members knowledge about mother and infant health by a Zoom meeting. Door-to-door -door intervention. Education for the community RW 20 Dongoresan about maternal health, nutrition for pregnant women, workout for pregnant women, infant health, breast milk, and complementary foods via a small WhatsApp group. Macau Closing, send donation as an appreciation to the participants. These are the indicators of success for Macau. Impact, increasing cadres' knowledge and skills about maternal health and newborn care from 70 to 100 or 42.86%, increasing member knowledge about antenatal care from 62 to 82 or 32.26%, increasing mother's knowledge about the health of pregnant women from 72.5 to 100 or 37.93%, increasing mother's knowledge about infant health and nutrition from 71.1 to 100 or 40.65%. The follow-up method is by giving questionnaire through Google Form and follow-up card. The evaluation method is by using pre-test and post-test, evaluation form, and discussion with Macau officers and hearing with stakeholder. External parties, Dr. Arif Wirabahari as speaker, the posyandu in RW 20 Dongoresan as a secondary data provider for a secondary assessment, and the city of Surakarta Department of Health as a secondary data. Indonesia is the world's fourth largest emitter of greenhouse gases with a total of 2.4 million gas carbon dioxide and this number is from 2015. Imagine how is it six years after? COVID-19 pandemic also contributes to the increasing number of ways. We did a survey and here are our results. To increase the awareness and knowledge of the participant of domestic waste and energy use and also apply sustainable lifestyle, which are assessed from 10% of improvement in process on activity past project and 20% on webinar, and to invite 100% to be 30 days challenge participant and make sure 75% of them are doing the challenge they are being held from October to December 2020. Scope Jim Saif Kaung Pat, an activity called Life, Little Things for Mother Earth. In life, we had done plenty of fun interventions. The first intervention was a training for Scorp Team Safe Compact members about sustainable lifestyle brought by human rights trainer. The second intervention was the most awaited event, the 30 days challenge. We challenged those who wanted to live a sustainable lifestyle and build good habits in their life. We brought four different themes for every week. We also play games and encourage the challengers to do ground campaign to their families about sustainable lifestyles. Not only that, we also held a talk show about the impact of fast fashion to the environment via live Instagram so everyone can watch it live. No, 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 we're not done. In the fourth intervention, we also held a webinar about how to live a sustainable lifestyle during the pandemic and how it can save the world via Zoom and live YouTube. After the webinar, we opened a donation to the public by two ways for five challengers equal to the netting one tree, and also for money donation via Chimsa Compact account. We succeeded in improving our members and participants' knowledge about sustainable lifestyle through our pre-project training on our members, 30 days challenge with 134 participants, webinar with 368 participants, talk show with 28 participants, and we also donated 60 trees. We also collaborated with various external and media partners. Here are our indicators to make sure our activity brings an impact. We evaluated our activity by measuring members' knowledge on pre-project training, the number and knowledge of webinar participants, the number of Instagram live viewers, and the number of trees that are donated. And, for the follow-up method, we provided questionnaires to the participants 7 days after the activity.
Since 1993 until October 2020, 5,334 cases have been found in Yogyakarta. Globally based on units, there were 38 million cases. But due to this COVID-19 pandemic, HIV and AIDS temporarily vanished. To respond to the issue and fight for human rights equality, Skoda Chimsa Region 5 held a series of activities called World AIDS Day 2020. Started from building our members' capacity by holding translocal peer educator training. Our goal is to educate and spread people's awareness about HIV, AIDS, and STIs. We also support realization of 3.0 in 2030. CHIMSA, an organization based on data, made an assessment for specifying targets' needs. The assessment was filled out by 75 people living with HIV AIDS, mostly from Yogyakarta. Pertaining to discrimination, 64% respondents thought public assumptions on their promiscuity, HIV is easily transmitted, refusal of physical intimacy, and also the discrimination from health workers. One respondent stated that he got harsh words from a health worker, that being an HIV survivor is a torment from God. To end the stigma and stop discrimination, we took a step to persuade public for signing our petition called Kembalikan Hak ODHA ODHA IV Sebagai Manusia at change.org. Bridging the zero age related diseases and regarded to their needs, we held free counseling that collaborated with Lembaga Psikologi Progresif and Yayasan AIDS Indonesia. 11 survivors accumulated met the counselors. 9 out of 11 filled out the evaluation form and got solutive insights. They also say that this counseling is highly needed for the survivors. All this activity series is integrated to make a future discussion with the NGOs in Yogyakarta who supports the survivors. We had audiences with Victoria Plus, PKBI, and also Kebaya. They need more capacity building such as entrepreneurship, IT, and fundraising. They ask us jointly advocate to the government, especially the health office. One week later, we had an audience with Sleman Health Office and Victory Plus to assure PLWHA welfare. For the next month, we will have future audiences with GO and NGOs who take their part in supporting survivors. Non-communicable disease collectively account for nearly 70% of all deaths worldwide, and every 8 seconds someone dies from diabetes. Indonesia itself is the 7th country with the highest burden of diabetes in the world, and more than 10 million Indonesians suffer from the disease in 2019, with a prevalence of 6.2% of the total population. Yogyakarta is one of the 5 provinces with the highest prevalence of diabetes in Indonesia, whose cases have increased from 2.6% to 3.1%. The existence of the COVID-19 pandemic, which has been recorded as having more than 1 million cases in Indonesia, has only made things worse. According to the head of the National COVID-19 Task Force, as many as 92% of patients in several regions in Indonesia have comorbid factors, with diabetes being the most common comorbidity and having a greater proportion of death among other comorbidities. Seeing these conditions, MMS OME understands the need to increase public awareness to reduce the risk of diabetes during the COVID-19 pandemic. We chose the general public and members of MMS OME as the target of our activities because not many people are aware of the effect of COVID-19 on lifestyle changes among diabetics, and students had a major role in spreading information related to diabetes to their family and close relatives. Here are the goals that we hope to achieve by looking at these success indicators. RESIS Daughter consists of several activities, including pre-project training with the theme of diabetes prevention in COVID-19 pandemic, followed by a talk show with the theme of perspectives from people living with diabetes during COVID-19 pandemic. We invite two speakers from Sobat Diabet, an expert, Dr. Elizabeth Susianiwati, and an activist who is also a person with type 1 diabetes, Sarah Sungkar. Followed with a webinar with the theme of dealing with diabetes during the COVID-19 pandemic era, filled with various speakers from different expertise, Dr. Muhammad Khotibuddin, Dr. Bo Pramono, who is also the head of Dr. Corner Branch of Presadia, Dr. Roshani Meida, Dr. Yunani Setian Diana, and Dr. Ahmad Ikhlerudin. Resistor is also a collaborative activity with Comdef Arias and MSA UMI 
which makes the residents of Dusunwatu the main target of this webinar. With that, the committee also facilitates cadres and residents with a number of laptops to be used to watch together at Pak Duku's house, while still paying attention to health protocols. The number of talk show viewers till today has reached 248 viewers and webinar participants who registered are 167 participants. Resistor also managed to increase the knowledge of members from 55.6 to 92.8 and increase the knowledge of webinar participants from 77.9 to 88.8. .8. We provide post-project evaluation forms to participants, hold committee evaluation forms, and hold pre-test and post-test as our evaluation method. We also held a discussion via WhatsApp with the residents of Nusunwatu, which was held on November 6 to December 13, 2020, as our follow-up method. We hope that Resistor can continue to have a real impact on the society by increasing public awareness and knowledge of diabetes prevention during the pandemic, so that people, especially those with comorbids, can avoid the danger of complications from the coronavirus. The local authority of the Central Java Province claims that the number of deaf disabilities in Ganyumas District is at 13.7% or 1873%. As mentioned, deaf people have limitations that cause them the difficulties in socializing with the community. To overcome these limitations, deaf people communicate using sign language, language that is not familiar to most people and considered difficult. People with disability often get stigmatized by their society too. For example, a stigma that suggests people with disability must be corrected as an enormous marginal rate, given that Indonesia's prevalence of disability is at 11%. 75% of members of Scrap Team Saunsut to join the pre-project training and 30 people to attend the talk show and sign language training. The goal is as follows. It consisted of a pre-project training, a talk show, and a sign language training. The pre-project training discussed signs of discrimination on the people's disability and prevention that organized on December 12, 2020 by the HRT Jinsa Unsut. The talk show talked about acts of discrimination against people of disability, especially their friends, carried out on December 19, 2020 by Sahabat Dengar. Whereas, the sign language training was open for general public and held on December 19, 2020 with Sahabat Dengar Banyumas, Ka Aulia. The success indicator is as follows. The evaluation method of pre-project training, talk show, and sign language training is pre-test and post-test. And the follow-up method of sign language training is making video in sign language on day 7 training in sign language. Kak Surya, a volunteer from Sahabat Dengar Banyumas as a speaker on the talk show. Kak Aulia, a volunteer from Sahabat Dengar Banyumas as a deaf friend, another speaker on the talk show, and the sign language trainer during the sign language training. Kak Firman, as a sign language interpreter from Pusat Layanan Juru Bahasa Isyarat, and at webinar doctor, at edukasi doctor, at Dr. Koas as a media partner in the publication of the activity. Reason or Responding to HIV and AIDS with Love and Understanding is a project by Skora Chimsa Unair to celebrate World AIDS Day 2020. Reason is held because there are still many people, especially in Surabaya, who don't have sufficient knowledge about HIV and AIDS. The targets of this event are the general public, also preclinical medical, as well as midwifery students of Erlanga University. Here are the goals of Reason. In its execution, Reason has six indicators of success to be achieved. 
Achievements and impact of reason are as follows. Local peer educator training attended by 67 newbies and members of Scora Chimsau Nair, resulting in 72% increase of average score. 36 students were participating in the quiz competition or Telescopia. A number of members and newbies mentioned attended Telescopia and uploaded the online campaign. A crowdfunding was also held through Kitabisa.com. The pre-event of Reason consists of two activities such as local peer educator training or LPEP regarding HIV, AIDS, other STIs, and the stigma against people living with HIV as well as an online campaign. The main event of Reason was held for three days. Day 1 started with an air campaign in collaboration with Suara Surabaya Radio 100FM and Indonesian Society of Dermatology and Venerology Surabaya, represented by Dr. Yuli Wahyu Ramawati, Masters in Clinical Medicine, Dermatology and Venerology Specialist as Speaker. The topic of the campaign was understanding HIV, AIDS, and people living with HIV. On the second and third day of Reason, a quiz competition surrounding HIV, AIDS, and other STIs called Telescopia was held. The competition was open for all preclinical, medical, and midwifery students of Erlanga University. In the preliminary round, the questions given were multiple choice questions. All competition questions were prepared by Skora Team Saunayer members and newbies and have been corrected and validated by our competent judges. Five teams with the highest score will proceed to compete in the final round. In the final round, the questions given were essays and the participants' answers will be directly scored by the three judges based on main answer, supporting answer, reference, and how the answers were delivered. Here are the external partners of Reason including Telescopia's judges. Evaluation methods and follow-up are as follows. We hope that this event can be of benefit to all parties involved. See you in World AIDS Day 2021! Hi everyone! We are from the Chim Salam M organization and we are proud to present our project called Sedur. What is Sedulur? So, Sedulur is a project managed by SCOF Chimsa UMM in the framework of celebrating World Diabetes Day, which supports the Chimsa program in non-communicable disease, more precisely with the topic of diabetes. The reason we are doing this project is because Based on the data from the National Health Service in one period from March until 11 May 2020, as many as 23,084 people died from infection, and 31.3% of them developed type 2 diabetes. In addition, the global prevalence of diabetes incident in adults aged 18 years and over, an increase from 4.7% in 1980 to 8.5% in 2014 was observed. Then we conduct a primary assessment and through the primary assessment, 88 respondents were found. There are still a huge number of respondents as well of about 58% of them were found less aware of the risk factors, possibilities, and efforts to cure diabetes. Therefore, we raise the topic as them of the Sedulur 2020 webinar. Members of Chimsa OMM and the general public who are more vulnerable and has a productive age between 16 to 30 years, both men and women. In this project, we have decided on four interventions. The first, TikTok and poster competition with the theme, myth and fact about diabetes. Second, air camping with the theme diabetes at a young age the third member training with the theme diabetes in general and the last one is a webinar with the theme diabetes at a young age there are three materials present during the webinar the first presentation was delivered by dr ardi bustami specialist penyakit dalam the second one was delivered by 
Mrs. Aprilliana Ratna Damayanti Sarjana Gizi and the third one was brought by Dr. Inandi Reza Bramantia, specialist penyakit dalam. This is our media partner. There are three goals and indicator of success. There was an increase in the score of post-test training by more than 50%. The training was attended by 46 participants who are members of the Chimsa UMM organization. More than 100 participants attended the webinar. There are 146 webinar registrants and 125 attendees. Evaluation method provide pre-test and post-test to participants before and after a series of events in the webinar and conducting a questionnaire to assess participants' satisfaction from the series of events. By the training and webinars that we conduct, there was an increase in the scores of pre-test and post-test. Thank you so much for listening to our presentation, Chimsa. Hope you enjoy this video and have a nice day. National Doctors' Day campaign is an annual campaign held by Skomi Chimsa Indonesia. This year, National Doctors' Day campaign was held starting from October to December 2020. Commemorate National Doctors' Day 2020. Appreciate the doctors who are struggling at the forefront of handling COVID-19 in Indonesia. Raise awareness of medical students about medical education system in Indonesia and understanding the competencies required to become a good doctor in the future. With this background, Skomi Chimsa Indonesia carried out the 2020 National Doctors Day campaign with the theme Becoming a Good Health Professional. Throughout this campaign, Skomi Chimsa have done several activities such as hold a tribune and hand the end challenge, share infographic about medical education system in Indonesia and some developed countries in the world, conduct webinar series about online learning during COVID-19 pandemic and strategy to get LPDP scholarship, and publish some career prospect as a doctor, such as doctorpreneur, military doctor, clinical doctor, and United Nations agency staff. Not only that, we also did crowdfunding and distributed face shields for co-assistant students. We also distributed books from MIMS to our members and did research about the implementation of medical education curriculum in Indonesia. With this campaign, we hope we can contribute more to develop medical education in Indonesia and also can empower medical students to achieve their dreams as a good doctor in the future. Amazing, meaningful, helpful. Apa yang lebih baik daripada menjadi satu orang dokter yang baik? Ikut membantu pencetan seribu dokter Shh. yang baik bersama Skomi Chimsa. HDN 2020 becoming good health professional.